Aunque te esperará, mi corazón se alanza, un fantasma cuerpo real. Mi amor no tiene venganza, aunque te matará. Este viejo no sé. I heard a lot of the times people speaking about how they cannot fit in or how they are not welcomed anywhere, or how they escape the matrix and so forth. I also think that Gen Z cannot fit into society and its traditional norms at all, which is one of the reasons why Gen Z is so re isolated from all other generations. We have our own sense of humor, different values, and different ideas about society. Even our humor is not understandable by the previous generations. <laughs> So I recently finished reading Osamu Dazai's The Setting Sun and you do not have to read the whole book and analyze it to grasp its main idea. The book is about a woman who lives through the changes after the war in Japan. She is confused and torn between changes in class, values, morals and the economy. She is also an aristocrat and is willingly abandoning her class. For me it was easy to relate to this to my generation. Do not have to have any specific labels, for example, she was Japanese and she was an aristocrat in the 40s or 50s, in order to lose your sense of identity. When the world is changing, you are put on the spot of ridicule. For example, shaving a woman is actually not the newest concept, and when women were told to start shaving, most of them were confused and surprised, and they had to make a big change in their, in their daily lifestyle. I believe that the biggest and most relatable example would be immigration. Second generation immigrants or children of immigrants are usually faced with an identity crisis, whether they say it or not. Most of them do. They do not feel exclusively in the country that they live in, but they also no longer belong in the country that they left from. This brings about questions and pondering. If they do not fit anywhere, should they just abandon everything? It's a question that I formed during reading The Setting Sun. What happens if you just abandon everything, including society. <laughs> there is also another phenomenon concerning the first generation immigrants which plays on their ability to fit into society. Let's say a couple with two children moved in the 80s in a western European country. They have their values and methods of living that were ingrained in the country they left from and teach their children the same things that they were being taught in this 80s. Nevertheless, now, 20 years later, they return to their original country only to realize that they do not belong there anymore. This is because the values that they knew of changed drastically in their home country, to which they were not able to keep up with. Now that they went back, they do not feel like home anymore. Which arises the question, so what is right? How do people behave? How am I supposed to behave? And thus, they are completely isolated. They are also likely to have an identity crisis or an existential crisis. Let's look at No Longer Human and Stoner. These are two completely opposing books, two completely different books when it comes to everything, when it comes to fitting in into society, but I believe that they mirror each other completely and whether you read the either one of those, you will still read the same idea but in different viewpoints, I suppose. Stoner talks about William, a young boy who was born on a farm and went on to study at university and ended up being a professor for the rest of his life at the same university. He was always awkward and timid and did not always, well actually he never expressed any assertive opinions and he rarely talked about his feelings or his state of mind. We can only see how he felt when he found a mistress or when he would spend his days with his daughter or when he lost his job. Basically, through explicit events and behaviors. Even so, we do not exactly know the vivid moments when he was actually happy uh, or extremely angry or when he faced with an extreme emotion because he always contained it into himself. He was never happy in his life and if he was, life took it away. Therefore, I would like to say that he always found moments of happiness, but he was never able to sustain them, thus leading to an overall miserable life, on an overall level. But that's in the book. Some people might argue that his life was not miserable. 
On the other hand, in No Longer Human, the protagonist always expressed his emotions. He was never able to relate to anybody, he always put on a facade, and when he was not able to keep up, he began abusing alcohol and took on substance abuse, as well as isolating himself by traveling to different places in the country. The protagonist had a great artistic skill, had a big family, and a lot of relatives, and he had opportunities, even, actually even a woman who loved him and a friend who kept contact with him were there for him. Basically, he always rebelled and only worked for money when he was desperate for money. Compared to William, who was alone and only had his two parents who passed away eventually. Yeah. He says phrases such as, I'm afraid of humans. Or he would explain how as a child in school, he would act like a comedian because he mastered the art of making other people laugh in order to make them less intimidating and be accepted amongst them, even though he doesn't really feel that inside out. By the end of the book, he disappeared completely, and I would like to say that he used that time to ponder and think about his life and kind of break free. But that is merely my opinion. You can have your own, you can contradict me actually. In the end, both of these books had the same character, not being able to fit in. The only difference is that in Stoner, the protagonist kept it all in and confirmed to all social norms despite his misery. Meanwhile, in No Longer Human, the protagonist always rebelled despite being judged by everyone in his life. They also both became miserable. In No Longer Human, he was described as looking much older than he was. While in Stoner, he passed away and the book ended abruptly. This structure was used in order to express an end, with no afterthoughts, no continuity, no consciousness, nothing except nothingness and being forgotten. And therefore these two books made me think that if both of them ended up being miserable, why did they not just do something completely different? Maybe option three, change society or exit society, or because there are just two men and they didn't have the power to change society, why didn't they just leave? society why didn't they find an option three a third option to this first option would be conforming second would be rebelling a third one i i really want to read a book where my ideal third option when you cannot fit into society is kind of found and it doesn't have to be running away away from society being a non-citizen and living in a cottage core life in the mountains where nobody can find you and you live in a self-sustainable life. I know it's a concept unimaginable in a late stage capitalism kind of world, but thinking about it doesn't disrupt anyone's peace. So uh, who did the right thing in the end? Thank you for watching.